Awesome. Well, it's 5.30, so I think we can get started. Welcome, everybody, to our panel today for starting your Zero Waste Journey, a live question and answer. My name is Julia Mintz. Um, I work with BU Sustainability, and I'm a graduate student here at Boston University. And I'm very excited to um, be here today to discuss Zero Waste. And we have an incredible panel of people that we'll get to hear different perspectives from. Um, and just a couple of reminders before we get started to please keep your microphone and your camera off for the duration of the panel so that we can see and hear our panelists better. Um, if you have questions throughout the different sections, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll have a chance to address them towards the end of the panel. Um, our session is being recorded and will be available after the um, event with closed captioning and so we're going to um, I'm going to take you through a brief introduction and background of zero waste and zero waste at Boston University. We'll get to hear um, a discussion from our panelists and then we'll have a question for or we'll have a section for audience question and answer. So all of your questions that you put in the chat, we will have a chance to get to. And with that, I'm going to take you through our background here. So just to start off, let's go into what zero waste is. Really, it's um, rethinking and reimagining our concept of waste. And waste in general can refer to um, different types of materials that we dispose of in our daily lives, whether it be recyclables, compost, trash, um, that get processed in different ways and um, have different impacts once they leave our, our daily processes. So with zero waste, we're thinking about how materials flow through our daily lives and through, flow through society um, and conceptualizing the whole life cycle of waste from the source material to our own personal usage of these materials and ultimately how they get discarded um, and identifying where in this life cycle of our waste we can intervene to eliminate wasteful practices and ultimately um, lessen our environmental footprint. So on the screen to the right, you'll see the peer reviewed internationally accepted definition of zero waste. And really what this is referring to is working through various strategies to reduce our consumption of resources and the amount of waste that we create and minimizing our impact on the environment. And this is also um, measured as 90% diversion of waste streams from going to landfill or incineration. So again, those different streams um, recyclables, trash, anything that can ultimately end up in landfill, um, you, we would reach zero waste once we um, divert 90% of that waste. And this is visualized through the zero waste hierarchy that we also see on the screen here, um, which serves as a guide and uh, describes the progression of strategies to support a zero waste system, starting at the bottom uh, with the lowest use of materials, um, which are termed unacceptable, so disposing of uh, waste that goes directly to landfill, um, going up to the highest and best use of material where we're rethinking our whole concept of uh, what we term as waste and ways to intervene before we even get to the point of recycle, uh, recycling, composting, um, getting rid of our waste in general. So to continue on from there, let's talk about how zero waste as a concept is different from just recycling or just composting. So like I had mentioned before, zero waste is a whole systems approach to rethinking our resource use. Um, and recycling and composting are part of that life cycle of our materials, and they are um, alternatives to landfill or incineration. They ensure that our materials continue on to fulfill their higher and best use after being disposed of. Um, but these strategies are just part of the broader zero waste concept. And this broader perspective really allows us to reduce waste before, again, the point of disposal, um, and involves asking what we're buying, um, how products can be repurposed or repaired, and how we can retain the value of um, our purchases and our goods over time and ex uh, extend their lifespans. And this allows us to make a positive impact as individuals, as members of the BU community, and as global citizens. So this can be practiced on an individual scale, and community scale, institutional, and uh, global thinking as well. So what is Boston University's zero waste goal? Here at Boston University, uh, the climate action plan of the university outlines goals and actions to address threats of climate change. And part of this is reducing emissions and identifying where these emissions are coming from uh, within our institution. 
So specifically, BU has a commitment to reaching carbon neutrality by the year 2040. And part of this is through addressing indirect emissions. So emissions that don't come directly from sources that are owned or controlled by Boston University, but are um, a product of these related processes. And an important avenue for addressing indirect emissions is through zero waste. Um, specifically, BU has a goal of reaching zero waste or 90% diversion, like we discussed, by 2030. And um, in terms of zero waste and its relationship with um, indirect emissions, um, there's a lot of greenhouse gas emissions that can be associated with our waste management processes, um, including when waste goes to landfill or incineration. Um, there's greenhouse gases that get um, emitted during these processes or through the trucking and shipment of goods into the university and trucking of waste out of the university. So through intervening in these processes, this helps um, our university to pursue this goal of zero waste. And to get a little more specifically into what we're doing to reach this goal, Boston University Sustainability is working to um, rethink and redesign our waste systems through programs that target uh, recycling, composting and reuse initiatives, um, developing networks of support at the university that connect the sustainability staff, department administration and faculty, facilities management and operations, and of course the student body. And um, in addition to that, establishing accurate data and reporting systems so we can track waste reduction over time and make sure that our campus infrastructure for managing waste is as efficient as it can be. And of course, engaging the BU community to be a part of zero waste initiatives through events such as these, annual programs, um, student-oriented student educational initiatives. And specifically in fall 2020, um, reshaping our zero waste priorities to protect public health and the safety of our workers. So in collaboration with BU Dining Services, we've identified disposable containers that minimize negative environmental impacts associated with their production and disposal. Um, there'll be infrastructure changes in buildings to um, mitigate the risk of transmission through touch points and protect our custodial staff and of course our student community and increasing access to food waste collection in resident halls starting with Warren Towers. So with this perspective that I'm kind of discussing is a more technical zero waste um, perspective that gets into what BU is specifically doing to support um, this goal of reaching 90% diversion. But now we can move on to um, a perspective that we'll get from our panelists today, which will be a more everyday perspective of um, how zero waste manifests in our lives as individuals and what we can do to improve our sustainability and decrease our environmental footprint. So we're very lucky to have with us today, Sabrina Alclair, the CEO of Unpacked Living, Abby Shi, the BU student chief Chief Communications Officer of Sea Green Co. and Maria Camila Vasco, um, UMass student and founder of Uvida. So I will pass it off to, we can go right in this order, Sabrina and Abby and Maria um, to give us a little more information about themselves before we get started. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, I'm Sabrina Claire, and I am the CEO and founder of Unpack Living. Uh, Unpack Living is a plastic free store. Uh, I think it was the first plastic free store in the state and I'm from Colombia. I've been in the US for three years only, which is shocking. And uh, I live in the North Shore. I have a full-time job and I am an avid environmentalist. And I am so happy to be here right now sharing this with you. Sorry. Hi, my name is Abigail. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm a BU student. I'm majoring in biomedical engineering at the College of Engineering at BU. Um, I'm supposed to be a sophomore, but I'm taking a gap year this year. Um, and I am one of four students who co-founded the Zero Waste Convenience Store, Sea Green Co. Uh, specifically, I manage communications such as newsletters, emails, and like outreach to other stores like we had um, with Cambridge Naturals. 
Hi everyone, my name is Maria Vasco and I am 22 years old. I just graduated from UMass Boston this May, um, May 2020. And I started UV The Shop a year ago in, in 2019 because as an environmental studies and sustainability major, I was just really like bothered um, when I was learning about all the climate issues in my major, but I wanted to do something more than just learn about it in class. So I thought, starting a business would bring attention to the environmental issues and that I've been doing since. Would you be able to possibly repeat that last part one more time? You got a little bit cut off. Yeah, my bad. It told me that my internet was unstable. What was the last thing that you heard? Um, if you want to just uh, repeat, it was a little bit choppy throughout. Okay. So my name is Maria Vasco, and I am the founder of UV The Shop. Um, I am an alumni to UMass Boston now because I just graduated in May and I was an environmental studies and sustainability major which is where I discovered my passion for environmental advocacy and I currently live in Boston. I was raised in Boston but I was also born in Columbia and yeah I've always felt like I needed something to really focus on that was really important and I'm so happy I found this field. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all so much. And with that, we have a great discussion that we want to get started on. And so the first question to start us off is, how did you first become interested in zero waste? And maybe Sabrina, you can start us off. Okay. Um, I love when people ask me that question because it's, it, it goes down to a bottle of shampoo. I came to live in the U.S. and um, I don't have access to recycling where I live, which is crazy to think about because, you know, I come from a country where I had recycling, then I came to live here and I live in a condominium. And when I started dividing my trash, my husband said to me, we don't have recycling in this condominium. So I was shocked. <laughs> and then like that that action led me to start rethinking what I was buying. And then one day I was like any other person doing groceries and I was trying to choose my next bottle of shampoo. And I just exploded. Like my brain snapped and I said, why do I have to keep buying trash? Why do I have, why am I obligated as a consumer to choose plastic and to keep buying the trash that companies produce. Why can't I bring my container, my empty container and refill it at the grocery store? Why isn't this a thing? I had no clue what zero waste was. I had no clue what plastic free was. Didn't know there was a movement outside. I was just any other person. And right there and right then I swore that I was never going to buy any more trash that could not be recycled. And that's what happened. That was January, 2019. And then this whole thing started. It was like a snowball effect um, where I had no idea what, like, what was going on, why was uh, the plastic pollution an issue. And I kept seeing in the news, like all the whales dying and all the, these things happening global warming, climate change, call it whatever, but I never quite understood what was happening. So I think my, my involvement in Zero Waste started when I read about it and understood what was going on. And then I investigated locally what was happening with recycling. And, you know, once you get in, you, you cannot get out. Like there was no way I was gonna go back and say like, oh, well, this is not me. There's nothing I can do. It was all like, au contraire. It was uh, an opportunity for me to reach out and to see what alternatives I had to stop producing trash, doing trash audits, meeting wonderful people. But when I started doing this, 
I couldn't find local resources and it was really hard to find the information and it was all over the place and there was no zero waste stores. There was nothing. The only thing online was like the people, like the, the, the first people that had been doing it for a while, which is B. Johnson, the zero waste home person and Lauren Singer that owned the package free shop in New York. But this was all new, completely new. And I needed to step up. So I wanted to do something. There was something inside me saying like, you need to do something about this. You need to get the word out. So Unpack Living started as a blog where I was sharing what I was doing without even knowing what I was doing. And then it evolved into creating the Zero Waste Massachusetts group on Facebook that right now has almost 4,000 members. And then it just became this whole community of people sharing their own journey, journeys and my own journey. And then I created the store, which is online because it's really hard to have a store in Massachusetts. And I, I didn't also know like the part of the business because I, I was not born in the US. So I have no idea how to create a business in this country, abide by the rules and not do like, you know, everything like in, in an organized risk free way. So that's why I'm back living is only online, but it has been quite the journey. I cannot say I'm 100% zero waste because that's a lie. Anybody that says that is just lying. But I've learned a lot. I've met wonderful people, including you now. Um, the community keeps growing and it's incredible how well received everything is and how everybody's open to new ideas and open to new products. And like, it's, it's an, a really good thing to see that people actually want change. People see the problem and they want change. And that's how, that's how I got involved into it. Like made the group, made the blog, made the group. And then I was featured in uh, WCVB Chronicle. And then I was featured in the Boston Globe and in Boston Globe magazine. And then it just blew from there. <laughs> and it's been really, really great. Thank you so much. And how about you, Abby? How did you first become interested in zero waste? Yeah, um, I've always been passionate about environmental and sustainable issues um, when I was younger, especially just with climate change and like animal endangerment. I only recently heard about zero waste as like a term or movement. Like I didn't know it existed. Um, I did grow up on like more low waste practices um, and like, like a POC like my family like came from China so like in that type of household uh, my parents would always like we still do but like have a bin of like plastic bags that we would just like reuse um, and we would never like like throw it away until it was like completely done for and a lot of like different things like that um, a lot of like recycling and emphasis on emphasis on recycling in our household um, so I think when I got onto BU campus, I knew that I wanted to do stuff with regarding sustainability and environmentalism. And I met these like wonderful um, three other students who all had already previously met each other through the first year innovation fellowship program here at BU. And I wasn't part of that, but um, they were like, do you want to join? We're creating this like zero waste convenience store to make it more accessible for college students. And I was like, that sounds amazing. I'm really, I'm so in. And I think through them and like talking with them and doing research for Sea Green Co, I've like learned a little bit more about zero waste myself and definitely a lot of like products out there that I had never heard of before and didn't know existed. And we're doing research into bringing it like onto the BU campus for students. So like both personal, um, like development and also like helping out with other people. Um, but it's definitely a learning process. Um, I am like nowhere near def like no waste. Like I, it's just very hard to get there, I think. Thank you, Ben Maria. So for me, my journey started in my freshman year of college. I was originally a political science major and I picked that major because I was a big debater in high school, but I was always debating um, like environmental issues. And I thought 
oh my gosh, I'm having so much fun doing this. Like I, someone told me like, oh, if you like to debate, you should go into political science. Then I started taking the classes and I was like, no, this is not really like what I thought it would be. And so I had a science requirement on my audit and I saw environmental science and I was like, this sounds interesting. So I signed up for the class. And then like after the first three classes, I was so intrigued. I thought it was the most interesting class ever. So I created relationships with the professors and that's when I started like becoming welcome to the my bad and um yeah so after getting really close to my professors they started telling me about these sustainability groups on campus and I switched my major I just like dove in head first but over time it it becomes kind of hard to deal with on your own because you start thinking about the, the environment. So that's when I had to reach out and like make friends that were also passionate about climate issues. And that's when I started her, le learning about the zero waste journey. And I definitely looked up to the idols like Lauren Singer and, and um, Bea Johnson. And I was like, wow, like if these women can do it and they're leading it, like they're gonna pave a way for a lot of other people that are gonna continue to, to do research around this. And I love that every day there's like a new product in the market like this is a very new it was like back in the day before plastic this it was the norm but because of plastic we've changed a lot so now like there's so many opportunities to look at natural resources like like bamboo or hemp and just like really do research on what are some alternatives to plastic and that is like a area that a lot of us should be focused on more so it's a really fresh movement that we still have a lot of action to take upon, but it's really exciting to watch it grow and improve over time. Definitely, and it's great um, that you you guys touched upon um, some of the challenges of zero waste in your answers there. Um, zero waste can seem challenging sometimes because it's uh, viewed sometimes as an all or nothing effort rather than a process or a journey that takes time and commitment. So what I'd like to know is how was the process of adopting a zero waste lifestyle for you, the transition into um, practicing some of these ideas? Uh, well, um, the process is unique and the process is individual, I have to say, because we don't share the same lives, basically. We're all individuals. So it's not, there's not a manual to tell us how to do this, not so far. So that's the first thing I say to people when they start asking me, but like, how, like, how did do we start? Like, what should I change? Should I just throw everything away and buy everything new? Or like, what should I do? Like, should I just go live in a commune and grow my own food and like go off the grid? No, it, you have to adopt Oh, for the first step, I think, is to be aware of the problem and then, like, accommodate your life to the the changes you want to make. It's not all or nothing. I actually been sharing my my own plastic free journey because one thing. Let's make something clear. One thing is zero waste, and the another very different thing is plastic free. They they connect, but they're different. Um, definitions and there are different things that people want to do. Being sustainable, it's, it's like the whole and it's the goal to be sustainable, but there are many ways to do it and you have to adopt the things that can be easy for you to do budget-wise, life-wise, work-wise. So it's like a whole different, like a, a catalog of things that you can do. It's not just about plastic. It's not just about emissions. It's not, um, it, it's many things. So, and I think, and I'd say to everyone, like every little thing you do counts. Don't think that it doesn't count. Even if you become aware like, oh, electricity wise, I should turn my, my lights off and I should turn my computer off at night. There's people that just leave it on forever. That's, that counts, that makes the difference. If you decide to buy an electrical vehicle, good for you. If you don't, then it's okay. As long as you're aware of the problem and you decide to adopt these little changes, 
and it's a process, then it becomes something that you just do every day. When I started, it was super confusing. I wanted to like compost and get rid of plastic and I hated plastic. And it was like, everything was so overwhelming that it took a lot of time for me to understand that it's a journey. It's a process. It takes years to become a, a sustainable person. There's no such thing as the perfect environmentalist not Lauren Singer, not all these people that we admire. There's just like, there's just sustainable people. Like there's just people trying to do their best uh, just by changing some things, buying a bamboo toothbrush, buying a, a bar shampoo. You don't have money to buy bar shampoo. Don't worry about it. Pick up the trash on the street. There are some things that you can do that don't have to cost money and they don't need a lot of effort. So just like getting the word out, being an example, bring your own lunch to your office or to, to college and use your own cutlery, wash it at home. People see you doing these things and trust me, it is contagious. It is contagious because people will be like, huh, I never thought about bringing the cutlery to the office, for example, instead of you know using plastic, things like that. Use your own water bottle, your water bottle reusable water bottle doesn't have to be aluminum and like fancy metal it can be a plastic one but just reuse it you know be be aware that there is a problem live your life but just don't waste don't be a wasteful person and and you know if you have the means and you have you can afford to make even more changes then then just do it it takes one person to say something and change the mind of somebody else. So it's it's like a commun it's like a community of really aware people <laughs> that need to support each other. And that's why I when I created the Zero Waste Massachusetts group, I wanted to be a hub for people to just come and ask anything. And just no matter in which stage of your journey you are, you can just ask anything in it. Even if it's political, even if you, no matter where in Massachusetts you are, like the rules are for everyone. If you're confused about recycling, if you're confused about composting, if you want to start doing something but don't know where to start, we can share our own experience and then you can like take parts of everyone, everyone's journey and adapt it to your own life. Because like I mentioned before, there's no manual, there's no rules for these. And there like sadly there's no many accessible things not yet like camila and i are working on it uh to make it accessible for people to get more um you know more sustainable products have access to refills have access to to the information and and just share share why are we doing this why is it important i mean it, sh it should be logical for some people why it is important, especially now. But sadly, like the priorities are not there. Like there's so many things happening happening in the world now that would uh, you lose like the north? You lose your your focus on what is important. And you know we, we're multifaceted beings. We can just we we don't have to lose that mission and that the the goal of being sustainable and and still be aware of everything else so it's not an all or nothing it's just a a, a, a process and anything you do matters anything you have the power as a human being and as a citizen to make a stand to do make to like make your own choices and choose whatever you want but just make it sustainable <laughs> Maria, did you want to jump in? Yeah, so definitely the journey is like, it's also individual. I definitely agree with that because like I have the memories of how overwhelmed I felt. I knew that the right thing to do was not to throw everything away, even though that's like what I wanted to do. Cause I was like, I want everything to be non-plastic in my house and in my room and all my products. But I was like, that is within itself is not sustainable. So 
what I started to do was I was finishing all my products and then I have two older sisters who would also give me their lotions that they didn't want or like their friend and their, their perfumes, like their stuff. And then I would keep them in my room just because I didn't want them to be thrown away into a landfill. But then I was like, this lotion is not even like good for my skin and it's packaged in plastic and it's from a brand that has been around for like 20 plus years and doesn't care about the plastic pollution that they are giving out into the world. So I was like, I definitely don't want to continue supporting these brands. So I started becoming more of an overall conscious consumer. And I was telling my friends, I was like, hey, like I'm giving away these products if you want it. And then they asked me, why are you throwing away these products? Like it's brand new. No one has opened it. I'm like, you know, like I, they're chemicals, they're not transparent. Like you don't really know the effects that this has on your body. And then when you shower and all that goes into the drains and where does the water go? Like we need to start thinking more ethical about everything that we consume. And then over time, my friends started like noticing that I was a little different. I felt more aware and they, it is contagious. Like they noticed me with my reusable cutlery and I wouldn't always tell people because I didn't want them to like think I'm weird or something. But that was like in the very first week. And then after that, I'm like, this is fine. This is not bad. And after that, I started seeing like my friends even like starting to show an interest in doing the same things. They're like, oh, that's, that looks easy. Like, oh, I see you now. Like, and then you know, people just become more interested. They're like, where did you learn about this? Where are you getting all this education from? Um, are, are there any more resources? And so people don't know about alternatives to plastic. And that is really what we should be buying. And we should not be continuing our own plastic pollution problem. We should be investing in research and alternative materials. And even outside from the zero waste journey, like just being more sustainable in general, like learning about our overall environment and obviously the car emissions and things that we don't just buy from someone, the things that we do in general that give off emissions and can contribute to climate change. So it's a very individual journey, but I'll, I would say like have a lot of patience with yourself, acknowledge that you're actually trying to do something good for yourself and for the environment. And that means it's you're trying to do something good for everyone. So don't let people's comments stop you and don't let your own negative comments stop you like one little action actually makes a difference. And if you ever feel like a journey, just make sure to reach out to people because there's other people that will have the same questions or same concerns or people that will have the answers to your questions. And just make sure that you're not alone in the journey because the last thing we'd want you to do is to like not keep going because it's over the years, it's going to co continue to adapt and we're going to be changing a lot of stuff that we bring into our house and the way that we produce and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Well, to go off of that question, um, I want to actually address some of the questions that we've gotten from the audience. So first, um, let's talk about what is it like to start a business um, or make your aspirations a reality? Did you want to give up at any point without a business background? Was it a lot of research? And maybe Maria or Sabrina can jump in on that one. Sure, I love that question. So what it's like to start a business or make your aspirations a reality? Did you give up at all specifically with a business background, without a business background? Well, I do have business background. <laughs> I am, um, I studied interior design in Colombia, but that didn't work at all. And then I started uh, marketing. I'm a digital marketing manager, and that's actually what I do in Boston at an interior design company. That was a coincidence, but that's something else. So um, what is it like to start my own business? So when there's passion, there's nothing that can stop you. And when I started investigating and, and talking to people, and knowing a little bit more about what was happening in the world, what, like, what was happening with recycling, why it doesn't work, and all these things that go on around sustainability and zero waste. And I saw a whole, like a, a, there was a blank, an empty space in Massachusetts specifically for that. There was no zero waste businesses. There was no 
nothing uh actually clean land in cambridge was just opening they opened like three months before i did and it was fantastic to be able to go and see one of these wonderful stores if you haven't been there this is a store in cambridge and it's a refill store now nowadays there are many different zero waste stores they're not all the same so because i own the zero waste massachusetts group in facebook there are many businesses there it's not just me you be the by camila is there clean land is there their owners are there newbury port there's a store there now there's one in arlington uh so there are many resources now which i think is fantastic because there's no competition between us actually we encourage each other and we sh like i share with them most of the products i sell that i find but we all have what what we share is the passion for the planet and the passion to like do something about it but we have different uh goals and different missions and visions and that's really fantastic because it gives like a, a wide variety of in a catalog for people to like you know see what they like and try many things so instead of being just one and or or non now you have like an uh, accessibility in and you know a um, wide variety of prices and locations to go to and that's fantastic so for me uh no i i i haven't <laughs> like no, so far i don't want to give up i actually want to keep going it's it, it's very encouraging to do what i do to do what we do and especially meeting people that wants to do better it's fantastic i love it i love when people ask me stuff through social media i also do pop-ups because i can't afford to have a store uh but i do go to pop-ups and fairs and events all over massachusetts and people get excited and they come to you and say like hey i follow you and i really wanted to see the products live and i wanted to meet you and talk to you and people want to talk to you and that's great because i love to talk about this and they ask you questions and they're like but i don't understand like why you know what is compostable or what is recyclable or why can't i put this in the recycling and when you have the information and the tools to help these people it's great it feels great because i think that they feel like more like the more capable to do things I, I don't know and even like when they buy either from me or from camila or from you know whatever zero waste store it's great because they're choosing to buy a product that is sustainable and it's not going to harm the planet it's not going to be here for thousands of years hurting the animals and the you know the sea life and the ocean and like just not going away everything is supposed to go away that's what they teach us at school like right like everything is a cycle and that cycle should not be broken even we are supposed to go away we are supposed to decompose so that's what we cannot break the earth is supposed to work one way so anyway uh opening a, a business is really it's a challenge i'm not gonna say it's been super easy and it doesn't i i haven't had my oopsies and you know it's it's a learning uh process and it's um you need people that knows and you need people that love you and and like want the best for you to tell you what to do me not being a u.s citizen and me not being born in the u.s is a huge disadvantage because i didn't like i don't know how businesses work here i didn't know what i should do in terms of like like how to register and where to go and like what to look for and taxes and like all these things but my husband is a wonderful person he's an american guy and he actually went to business school in salem university so there you go i had him to tell me what to do and to give me all these ideas i went to marketing school so i live and breathe through knowing what's happening in the market knowing what people like knowing what they're looking for so this is my advantage in the business I do digital marketing so I have all that knowledge in in me of 
websites, social media, what to do. So it was a, a, a really nice mix of his knowledge with my knowledge and no money. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it's, it's really funny because you really want to do many things, but you have like zero <laughs> money to spare. I used my savings up until then uh, as a Colombian person. We are really big in saving and we are really big in not being wasteful and like not just buying things for the sake of buying the latest gadget or at least that's me. Uh, I have found that Latino people, Colombian people, we're not very, like we're not consumers. Like we're not like, oh my God, I want to have everything and I fast fashion and like, we're not raised that way, or at least my mom, like they don't raise me, that, they didn't raise me that way. And coming with that mentality to the US and seeing the like crashing into this huge consumerism and capitalism and money and everything is available and everything is easy and, and everything is packaged, which I hate. Um, that was a huge crash for me. So I wanted to to do something about it. And I grabbed the $2,000 I had and started my own business. And that was last year, uh, July 1st, 2019. So my business is a little bit older than a year now. And it has grown a lot, so much that this, this is my warehouse and I don't fit in here anymore. And, you know, hopefully and eventually I can keep reaching for my goals. I want to be a mobile survey store. And that's something that I have in my mind and I've been having in my mind forever. But as everything, it is a process. Um, my own journey, um, it, it's been a process. I'm still going to plastic. Um, did I did I ever wanted to give up? No, no, there are, there are mistakes and you know, you learn, you live and you learn. The thing with zero waste businesses is that they're just starting to be something. There's no rules for it. They don't exist yet. Like when you're trying to register as a zero waste business, you don't even know in which category you land. Like, are you a wellness business? Are you a spa? Are you a beauty business? So it's like, there's no rules. There's no, you know, we, we, we are making it happen. We are actually writing the rules as we speak. This is our time and zero waste businesses are starting to grow. Um, and we are writing these manuals and these like uh, processes for how to run these businesses because they didn't exist before. Refill stores didn't exist. Zero waste stores didn't exist. This whole new processes, circular economy, this is new. This is just starting to happen. So it's very exciting to be part of of this movement and and that i mean that's it like go for it if you want to start a zero waste business i am a person that i'm happy to share what i've been doing what mistakes i already made and and i wish everybody was as, as open as me because i i try to reach out to many other businesses in other states and nope i had no answer so yeah, that's it. Go ahead, everybody else. Well, I actually want to um, bring it a little closer to the BU community. And um, I want to ask Abby, what is your advice for college students looking to start a zero waste lifestyle? Um, I would say that, I mean, personally for me, I'm not like financially independent. Um, and as college students, like we don't have like disposable income for the most part. Um, so it's really hard. That's one of the goals of Seeking Co was trying to make things more accessible and affordable. Part of that was like location wise, bringing the store on campus so that people would actually see it. And if they weren't aware of zero waste as a concept before, then they would have that store and be able to walk into it and be like, or walk towards our pop-up sales and be like, oh, what are these products? That's so cool. I want to try it out. Um, and another part is of course, affordability, but it's a challenge because like zero waste and ethically sourced products are just generally going to come at a higher cost um, because of like fast, like fashion, for example, like they are just not ethically sourced and that's why prices are generally lower. 
Um, I'd say um, for students who are currently like Zooming um, and not on campus at home, like if possible, try to like input your parents' household decisions, um, like purchases, um, maybe composting if you have the like resources to do so, um, growing your own food, that can definitely help. Um, and on campus, um, if you have an apartment, obviously making your own food and doing grocery shopping is a huge, a huge component. It also tastes better, but um, getting takeout right now, especially, is like a lot of plastic packaging, um, single use because of COVID. Um, so I think that's a big one. I think trying to stop supporting uh, companies and doing research on what companies you support and being conscientious of where you're spending your money is a huge part of it because while it's important that we're all individually making these uh, changes, um, a lot of the responsibilities is also on like institutions and corporations and they're responsible for a lot of these uh, greenhouse gas emissions and waste uh, production. So I think supporting small businesses, uh, ethical, like sustainable businesses, um, and remembering that like you don't have to like feel super guilty. Like I felt very, very guilty um, because I kept buying products. I like didn't know what else to do. I had like a lot of products that were like wrapped in plastic or if I get stuff shipped um, to my house, that's like the transportation emission and like plastic packaging. And um, it's very overwhelming, but like a lot of it is talking to other people around you, creating conversation, making an impact that way because we as like college students are like we have a bigger feel like network and like platform um, to speak about these things than adults do and in like creating these habits while we're at sort of like a moldable age um it's like moving forward as adults we are like form better habits now yeah and uh to take another question from the audience maria how has the economic downturn in the past six months impacted your business? Well, my business is really small because it's just me. I'm a solopreneur and I just have the support of the people around me. Um, so it did impact my business only a little bit because part of my business is online and another one is physical, like in a storefront. So online was not really affected besides the fact that people were like, oh, once I, you know, get my paycheck next week, I will buy your products. And then I'm just like, that is what made me really focus and like shift gears. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to focus on offering products that are essentials because these are products that people need for survival basis. And that really means like, these are the things that we should be consuming. We don't really need all the stuff that like social media and just society tells us and COVID like really humbled me and everyone else down to focus on like what is essential to us and that's food, water, our hygienic products and anything that we really use in our house. So I was like, it, it didn't impact my business a lot but it definitely made me um, realize that I was already doing something really important because I was already offering products that are essentials like shampoo and body soap like these are things that we all really need so i was like okay i feel really good that i'm doing something that is meaningful and important and it's not just to you know have something out there it's something that everyone should be focusing on for the sake of our environment um but it was impacted physically definitely because the store was closed for about two months and even when it was open it just doesn't feel safe and sometimes people are like oh i I can't pick between the two to three soaps. I want to go into the store and smell them. And I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. Like you can't touch the soap because obviously someone's going to buy them and that's for someone else. And it just becomes like a new, like, I mean, no one has in our generation has dealt with a pandemic. So a lot of these things are very new and all businesses out there are having to adapt, but I'm just a small business. So and I'm, I'm 22 years old. I just graduated college. So I'm like on the same boat as everyone. I don't have like the big income that was really going to impact me. This is more of a passion based business. So I wasn't concerned that I was like gonna give up or anything like that. I just was like, all right, I'm just gonna keep talking about what is important to me and about the zero waste movement and eventually things will eventually go back 
to normal, which we shouldn't. We should be focused more on making more societal and sustainable changes. Thank you. Um, and anybody can jump in on this next question. How is the U.S. doing in comparison to other countries like China, EU, or Russia, or Colombia, um, in terms of zero waste, in your opinion? Yeah, so this, this, this question, I really liked it because I was an environmental studies and sustainability major for the past four years. So I was always in class just having like my brain being like filled with so much valuable information. And the US is, I will happily say that we are like kind of in the bottom and middle if we are considered like a developed country, but bottom in terms of like, we can be doing so much more like, we're supposed to be seen as a world leader as that's like what this society feeds us um but we're not really leaders because we are one of the most wasteful countries and it's not good for us to have an image that oh china is really wasteful um china manufactures a lot of the stuff so they used to take our recycling stuff and they were like, we no longer want to take the US's recycling and our trash. And we don't even have a efficient recycling system ourselves while being claimed a very developed country. So that is very bad. And that is why I say the US is at the bottom because we have so much technology. We are living like lavish when we are compared to other countries where we can get anything at the tip of our fingers. We have Amazon deliveries in two seconds. Like we're always seen as the country that has the next step in technology and healthcare and all that, but we don't because we don't even take into account the impacts that we are having on the planet. And we are the leaders in the CO2 emissions. We are the leaders in plastic pollution. We are the leaders in all the negative impacts as well, which we don't have to be. And that's why I'm so happy that our generation is having this conversation because we are the future. We are currently right now living. And so we have a lot of power and a lot of time in our hands to really make a societal difference. Um, you know, like we, it's our time to step up and, and talk about this, even when people don't want to hear about what we're doing in the US. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for that response. Uh, I think uh, students are interested in creating an app, um, uh, trying to promote literacy. So um, uh, that's part of their project. Um, and uh, it's nice to know, uh, it's nice to know uh, that uh, there is so much opportunity uh, uh, to, to, to do something helpful, provide literacy and provide awareness, like, like this very excellent uh, uh, event that's being organized. So thank you. So just to, um, before we have to wrap up, there's just one more question. And if you each want to give a quick answer, I want to hear from each of you. Uh, what do you wish that more people knew about zero waste? Um, I wish they knew that zero waste is, it's possible. I mean, no. <laughs> I wish more people knew that you don't need money to be a sustainable person. You just need to be aware and to, to have the will and the, the passion to do it. You just, yeah, you don't need money to do this. That, that's what I want people to know. I would say that I wish people thought of zero waste as something fun to do because personally, like as an environmental science major, I was very like, it was sad. I was depressed because I was just like, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna have children in the future? Like all these negative things that I started feeling alone. So I was like, I like to think of it as a fun thing now, as a coping mechanism, as like, any action that I take, I'm like, the planet is saying thank you to me and the planet has always taken care of us. So this is, should be a norm. Like we should be already accustomed to using reusables and, and already avoiding our plastic waste without the zero waste movement. Like it should be fun and enlightening that you are going out of your way to let the planet know that you know that humans are um, degrading it and that we are individually taking actions to make it better and in a way it's saying thank you to earth for all the years that it has been putting us putting up with all the human population so just if people think of it as exciting and fun and like 
it's a new thing and like it's possible, then I feel like more people would not be so shy around the topic of trying to be the 100% perfect environmentalist, which is almost, it's not yet possible in our society because we are in a capitalist consumer society. So we are challenging, we're challenging the status quo, we're putting a lot of top 1% rich people, the oil industry in like, a seat where they don't want to be in like they don't want us to know what they're doing so to us it's like we're educating ourselves we're empowering ourselves and we are creating a society that we all want to be in yeah i definitely agree with that i think thinking of reframing it as like something fun like you know supporting local small businesses and doing research into like new products that you can buy um whatever you're into like with fashion too you can like upcycle your clothes you can donate them you can um upcycle a lot of things that are not just clothes and i think like knowing that like everybody can find their niche sort of also in zero waste and they don't have to like encompass all of like zero waste in order to start off or to like enjoy it i think knowing that it's an ongoing process you're always learning um kind of like once your eyes are open you know like you just kind of keep on finding new things new references of it in like articles you read and then you sort of like want to go out of your way to find a book to read about it or like blog articles or like follow people on instagram that like lauren singer um who promote this sort of lifestyle and it's not like something that you have to, you can, but you don't have to put like a lot, a lot of effort into it and you don't have to feel guilty because a lot of the responsibility is again, like on big corporations and like oil companies. And so like individually you are, it feels good to just know that you're doing something and you shouldn't feel guilty if you don't get to that point where you feel like, oh, I haven't like, not all of my waste in a year can fill into like one jar. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I think that's a big, big thing to remember. And I wish that um, I had known that before too. And I feel like I would have gotten into it earlier on if it hadn't been so much of like, oh, watch this person keep a year's worth of trash in like one bag and that's it. And knowing that it's a range, it's a spectrum, really. Thank you all for um, those answers and for ending us on that note. And as we are in our last few minutes, um, I just want to take this time to thank our three amazing panelists for being with us here today and sharing um, all of your insights and wisdom with us. And also to our audience for spending um, this time on this evening uh, learning about zero waste and starting your zero waste journeys with us. So up on the screen, you'll see some additional resources to follow up with our three panelists. Um, as well as at the bottom, uh, I wanna draw attention to our um, seed grant program funding opportunity, which the deadline is coming up for October 1st. And we'll send some additional information about that in the chat. Um, and this uh, recording for this panel will be made available after the event. And um, thank you again to everybody for coming out today and to our panelists for sharing with us. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Join the Zero Waste group on Facebook. Thank you for having us. Reach out to us.